Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. Now I'm bringing out a bite-sized pieces. Today we've got some interesting things as a follow-up as Elon Musk was the host of Saturday Night Live as the Doge father went and talked about Dogecoin uh, a couple of times throughout the night. And that led me to sell every piece of Dogecoin that I possibly owned. And we're going to take a look at where that money is potentially flowing into and the reckoning of Dogecoin, but not so fast because there could be a vast resurgence just on what Elon Musk said this morning, Sunday, May 9th, 2021. And we'll take a look at uh, what else is going on as far as the Cardano project. This is just a follow-up to Cardano talking about moving into Ethiopia, having a contract with the government and what they are doing. And this really goes deep into what was being said as far as the digital ID and telecommunications, because there is a project that I want to talk to you about, which is going to open up into a trillion dollar industry. And the token is going to be natively based on Cardano. So we'll get into all those things in a bit. But first, let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So today it is uh, Mother's Day uh, here in America. So congratulations, everybody who's made it here. And uh, thanks to all the mothers out there. Really appreciate it for keeping everybody in line. And uh, this is what we have as far as the market goes. So we're at 2.4 trillion. We're, at, we're almost at 2.5. I think we actually touched that, but uh, came down a little bit. And then, of course, on Twitter, because this is Trade the Chain, all sentiment analysis, of course, Dogecoin, the tweets are up massively after what happened uh, yesterday with uh, Elon Musk coming in and uh, hosting that SNL, which I got to tell you, has probably been a massive uh, ratings, Nielsen ratings for SNL, probably bigger than it's probably been in quite some time. But, uh, you know, who knows? And uh, these are the things that are going on in crypto. Let's take a look at the prices themselves. Now, I will tell you this. Uh, didn't really do much for, for Bitcoin. Bitcoin's at 57. Let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. Bitcoin's at 57,000, Ethereum at 38. But, you know, Ethereum did touch 4,000. And, uh, man, what a massive run. 30% in a week, almost 4,000. Fantastic. Binance coin and Dogecoin hanging on to number four. But it had slipped uh, precipitously, I mean, quite quickly. And it was down to around whew, 44, 46 cents, somewhere around there. Now it's back up to 58 cents. And I think it's something that Elon Musk just put out uh, this morning. So not that's the way to rebound, baby. That's the way to rebound. Cardano, oh man, I think Cardano is going to go up to $3 um, soon. I just, I mean, everything that's been going on, and especially with their smart contract launch uh, for Alonzo in uh, August or September, somewhere around there. I mean, look, Cardano did all this stuff and has no smart contracts yet. Where do you think it's going to go when the smart contracts hit? Uh, not financial advice, just financial opinion. And everything else is pretty much the same. Let's see, everything down, up and down, up and down. Let's take a look at what could potentially be a good runner if you're a big uh, trader. Uh, it's going to click on the projected range. And what do we got? So look at these. Reef, Ave, Red Coin, Celsius. Celsius, I think, is above, what are we at? Above $7. Congratulations. I'm one of those. I think it's going to be good. And then there's a project called Audius. I need to take a look at this. I know this is a good project. I just haven't had the time. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's uh, let's do a deep dive or just a regular dive into what happened last night. So last night, Elon Musk hosted SNL and everybody was a buzz about it. There was some live streams being done and uh, it was pretty entertaining. It was, I mean, some were actually pretty funny. Some were stupid, but I mean, that's just how it goes. But uh Elon Musk was able to slip in a lot of different references to Dogecoin, especially when he was doing the uh, the news right here, the weekend update, financial expert Lloyd Ostertag. And it was pretty good. They just asked him, like, what's Dogecoin? What's Dogecoin? What's Dogecoin? And he kind of explained it. And then uh, one of the one of the comments was uh, Michael Che there on the left. He goes, so you're saying it's a it's a uh, it's not a scam. It's a hustle. You're saying it's a hustle. And he goes, yeah, it's a hustle. And that was it. And then all of a sudden this morning, man, Dogecoin just took a big nosedive. And I, last night before the, uh, the actual segment aired for SNL, a couple hours before, I just said, hey, I'm, I'm selling my Dogecoin. And I had bought Dogecoin in like 2018, something like that. It was like well under a penny. And I actually bought, I, I sold it at eight cents. And I just kind of held on because I'm like, who knows where it could go, right? And I'm like, at 64 cents, I'm like, I don't care if it goes to a dollar or two dollars. I, I just don't. I'm like, I've gotten way more than I probably should have. And I'm just going to get out. And then I got out and I was like, eh, not, not so bad. And then people are like, you're going to be sorry. And maybe, you never know. But uh, I just think it's just fundamentally, I just don't see it. I mean, look, there's a lot of projects out there. 
I just don't see, see Dogecoin as being like the number one thing uh, out there. Well, you can do whatever you want to do. My goals are not your goals, but at 64 cents, I'm like, that's good enough for me. I'm pretty happy. So we had that. I put out a poll. I just asked the question. I said, hey, if you if you lost a bunch of money in Dogecoin, you know, because remember, uh, the people that, you know, bought my 64 cents Dogecoin are holding those bags right now. And I feel bad for them. I do. But you never know. Maybe because of what we're going to talk about in a little bit, maybe it's going to go up to $10. I don't, I, I can't believe I even said that. It's not going to $10. That'd be like crazy amount of market cap. There's just no way. I mean, I mean, if it gets to a dollar so much, so much the better. But can I live with myself if it doesn't go to a dollar? Yeah, I don't care. But I just ask people, I'm like, because remember, if, if it goes from 64 cents to a dollar, that's not even, you know, a 2x, you know. So like, in my opinion, I'm like, where do you want to put your money as far as like crypto? Where do you think the biggest gains are? I asked the question. And with 2,000 votes, which isn't much, I'll be honest with you, uh, you got Cardano, people saying, hey, I'm putting it in Cardano. Theta Voyager, and then right there, staying in Doge. So I will tip my hat to the Doge army. You guys and gals really are strong in your beliefs. And I hope it works out for you. I really do. Um, but uh, for me, I have to bid you adieu. And uh, that is it. I have no more Dogecoin. And that's all. So let me just think in the comments section. And uh, the next piece I want to talk about is how I got to tell you, I thought it was dead in the water. I'm like, ooh, I thought it was going to drop down to like 20 cents. But because of one article, this is what rebounds everything. So SpaceX accepts Dogecoin as payment to launch Doge One mission to the moon next year. What does that mean? Well, Elon Musk, SpaceX will launch Doge One mission in the first quarter of 2022, just around the bend, let's be honest, uh, just about a year or so away. With the company accepting the meme-inspired cryptocurrency as payment. So I was reading this, I'm like, so you're going to, so what does that mean? You're going to allow people to be on this, this launch and you're, you know, and you can pay in Doge? No, that's not what it is. So Doge 1, representing a 40 kilo cube satellite flying as a payload on a Falcon 9 rocket. So they're going to put this satellite in the rocket, launch it all up, and then it's going to go around uh, the moon. Great. Doge 1 will demonstrate the application of crypto beyond Earth orbit and set the foundation for interplanetary commerce. What the heck does that mean? So they're going to stick up, they're going to, they're going to put this satellite, it's going to go up to, you know, to orbit uh, the moon. And that's it. And then of course, you know, maybe in like, I don't know how many years from now, we start to colonize Mars, then maybe Dogecoin will be a part of that. I have no idea. But uh, this is, to me, it seems more like a publicity stunt than anything like this is fundamentally what we're going to do, but it's a heck of a story and it's trending everywhere. And people are like, see, I told you, you shouldn't have sold your Dogecoin. Sure, I'm okay. So that's what's going on. And that's the story. And it goes on here, but I almost fell asleep. So that's pretty much it. Uh, let me just think in the comments section. Let's move on to another part, another piece. So this is a great article by uh, Lewis Petrick. And it talks about Cardano's Africa project proves that blockchain might improve the world. And this is the things that I get interested in, things that I can help with right now, solve issues and just, you know, leave the, leave the world a better place than when I left it. And it just goes as a recap. And it's interesting about this is what he talks about as far as like, you know, what makes people wealthy, what makes countries wealthy and why are different countries left out? So we'll start. And he says, what constitute the wealth of the West? And these are the things that I don't think about because I am cursed with knowledge. I don't have that third world um, experience. I just don't. So when people are like, oh, you don't understand because it's really hard. There's no, there's no uh, cell service. There's no blockchain. There's no banks. I'm like, I don't understand because that's like commonplace to me. That's just how it is. So you have to really dig down and go, okay, what constitutes the wealth in your country? Is it the material uh, prosperity we have, the high level of education, or is it the infrastructure? And he says, uh, all factors are interrelated as far as infrastructure. Infrastructure, which I, again, got to really kind of think about, refers to all non-material institutions, facilities, and systems that are essential to society. And I'm like, these are the things like right here in the next three, I'm like, this is just normal everyday stuff for me. If you want to start a business, business you contact the tax office or you get, um, your, your, your tax, your, your TIN number just off the internet. If you want to get a recognized degree, go to university. 
very simple, right? Just go down, pay them some money, and then you get a, a paper that says you're awesome. And then to build a house, you legally acquire land. Again, everywhere I've gone, even in Puerto Rico, there's a central uh, you know, housing office or you know, central government that says, you own this piece of land. I just don't think about it. And in other countries, like third world countries, you effectively have no property when you buy the land. For example, there's a lack of the necessary bureaucracy and often the bureaucracies are corrupt. And I've seen that a lot uh, traveling around through Mexico. That's just how it is, let's be honest. One thing about Mexico, I'll tell you this, uh, as far as like, uh, hopefully I don't get bombarded with this one, but uh, I will just say it. Great thing about Mexico is like corruption, just out there in the open. Like, yeah, that is what it is. You know, if you want this, just pay us. But in America, it's like, we're not corrupt. And then of course, everything's underneath the table. That's just me, just my opinion. Don't lambast me, it's just how I see it. Uh, a whole two and a half billion people do not have a bank account. Uh, they are excluded from the international economy. So on top of everything we just talked about, people don't have bank accounts, very hard to do things. The reason, why don't people have bank accounts? Because can't just banks just go there? No, transactions are complex and they involve high, high costs. Here's an example. If you try to do, to transfer any kind of money from one bank to the other, uh, you want to do a uh, bank wire, it costs a lot of money, like 20, 30 bucks, depending. And then it could take up to five days. And like my bank's pretty good, it takes like 24 to 48 hours. Other banks, it did take five days and they suck. So I'm like, in this day and age, really? I can send an email to a friend of mine in India and it takes like 10 seconds and you can't send the money over? But I know it's not just paper. It's just zeros and ones. What's the deal? So here's how blockchain works. And I don't wanna, obviously I don't wanna go over that right now because this would be for the newbies. But if you are unfamiliar with how blockchain and cryptocurrency digital assets work, there's this thing spinning above my head. Go to danteachescrypto.com, it's 100% free. You can sign up and I'll explain all that stuff and make it really simple for you. So here's what Cardano is gonna do. In many countries of the world, people cannot make reliable contracts, right? There's no central office, everybody's corrupt, really bad. Either the bureaucracy is lacking or it's corrupt, like we talked about. Payments can be made quickly, uh, transparent, and decentrally with blockchain. Blockchain consensus can grant the validity of documents, no matter how miserable <laughs> the government is in their home country is. And then Cardano made a huge move just a couple of weeks ago. They said Ethiopia, a country of over 100 million people, is parting with the Cardano project to upgrade the education system. 5 million students will receive a blockchain ID that will help document student performing as a first step. This will resolve the issue of fake cert certifications. And even in, the, in, in first world countries, this still actually happens. People actually forge their documentation, say, yeah, I went to Yale, or I went to some other, uh, you know, some uh, higher education. And like, no, no, you didn't. This is just a forgery. And it still happens, which is a serious problem in Ethiopia as well as everybody else. And this might give young Ethiopians opportunities they don't have now because their diplomas are not viewed as being reliable in the West. All right, okay, sure. This was by John O'Connor. Uh, he is uh, one of the, I think the VP of operations there for, the, uh, for IOHK. And then the final thought is that Cardano consumes only a fraction of the energy thanks to not being a proof of, uh, being proof of stake, not proof of work. So I went over that whole thing for a reason because we've already covered this before. And the reason is, is because on top of what Cardano is gonna do, there's a new project. And we covered this a couple of weeks ago, along with uh, what we just talked about, where Cardano unveils mobile internet partnership. And I just kind of glanced over it, didn't really think too much of it. I thought it was cool, but that was it. And this is a project called World Mobile. And they're gonna provide 5G internet access and give customers a blockchain-based platform so they can verify their identity on top of the fact that they're gonna give them access to, uh, as time goes on, uh, insurance, healthcare, and financial. So on top of getting uh, telecommunications and internet, they're gonna get all those, all, all those things as time moves on. How they're gonna do that is the most interesting part. So I actually covered this in a video I just uh, made uh, yesterday, yesterday and today. And I had that, right, that dude right there in the middle, that dude, that guy, that's Mickey right there. He's the CEO and he came on the show and explained exactly how they're gonna do that. And I have to tell you right now, they are solving, they are, telecommunications is a trillion dollar company and they are solving it for 4 billion people who do not, do not have access to these types of services. And they're gonna do it in a very interesting and unique way that I think will really go well, not just because of what they're doing, because, listen, 
In 2017, when I got involved in crypto, everything was like, we're going to solve everything. It's going to be awesome. Well, how are you going to do that? Don't worry about that. Don't worry. We'll do it. And they didn't have anybody like really concrete in how they were doing it. First of all, it was all, it was all smoke and white papers, right? In this example, and I'll show it to you in the video, they've already done it. They've already gone to Tanzania. They've already done it with, the, with village, villages. And guess what? All these things that they're doing with this token, uh, they're, first of all, their team behind it, they have over 20 years experience in telecommunications or marketing or blockchain or actually all those together. And it's solid. All those people that could try to do things in 2017 couldn't do that because they had a crappy team. And this is what makes businesses and ideas work. Ideas are a dime a dozen, but if you don't have people behind and actually execute, it's worthless. This is why I'm excited about this project. And the bigger thing of why I'm excited is because this world mobile token, uh, this is going to be a native asset on the Cardano blockchain. And there is a token sale going on right now. I'll go over all that, but this is going to be massive utility for Cardano. It's a trillion dollar industry and they're solving a problem for 4 billion people. I can't say it any more simple than that. So. Uh, if you want to check that video out, I will probably do a live premiere so you can ask me questions. Maybe I can even get Mickey on and uh, he can stop by and answer some questions, but it's pretty comprehensive what we talk about and then we'll go from there. So uh, look, that is it for today. Uh, I'm excited about uh, certain projects, obviously, but uh, again, uh, do your own research and uh, it's just investment opinion, not investment advice. That's all. So, hey, if you found value in that video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, consider subscribing. I appreciate that, all that great stuff. Really appreciate it. Oh, I almost forgot. This video is going to be over at Dan Clips. I have uh, segmented everything from digital asset news, which is just the basics, the basics, the news stories. And I've segmented it from that to Dan Clips, which deals with more advanced topics as far as crypto digital assets and new projects. I don't want to confuse too many people. Uh, so I want to keep everything separate. And this will be over at Dan Clips. You can find the link in the description below and I'll try to link that uh, video at the very end. So that is it. Thanks so much. I'll see you on the next one.